yeah, you know what time it is, BBU Enterprise presents the DMV's number one outlet to the streets, BU DVD Magazine, BU, you. all you gotta do is be you, be you. all you gotta do is be you, be you. all you gotta do is be you, be you. all you gotta do is be you, be you. for the world premiere of What Men Want, starring Taraji P. Henson and Tracy Morgan. It's coming out tomorrow, all right? So make sure you get in the theaters and check that movie out. We're gonna see her on a red carpet today. We're gonna chop it up with her, ask her a couple of questions. Hey, the DC homegirl is back, Taraji P. Henson. So let's check out, and she getting the men's thoughts into What Men Want, right here with WPGC 95.5. <laughs> red carpet with Mr. Adam Sheckman, the director of What Men Want. So, in this, I, I asked you so many questions earlier. Uh -huh. So, what was your overall perspective of just getting the outlook of the movie that you wanted people to just say, you know, that's the concept, that's the funny part, that's the comedy in it? Well, I mean, the truth is that I don't feel like I want to get in anybody's head. I don't want the power. Um, but that's you kind of did because it's what no, men I, want, what we it think. It is. Oh, it's your girls here. Um, and um, you go down there. She's always trying to take my goddamn light. She's always getting in my light. Um, anyway, so um, it just seemed... Like, it was a very funny script. I wanted to work with Taraji. Um, I knew that she was really into it. And I knew that there was a lot of physical comedy and a lot of uh, humor to be mined in a movie. C95.5, it's your man Tony Reyes, a.k.a. Mr. 24-7, hanging out with the director and, of course, the star of What Men Want. Now, when we talk about this film, we know it's a spinoff of What Women Want. Mm -hmm. So, now, we know Taraji was in there, mm -hmm. and you, you kind of, I, I feel like you put Cookie together with, with Proud Murray. Like you, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. She, oh she put the, she, that character, because that character was like, you know, Cookie Line. <laughs> and, and, and Proud Mary all into one because she was just so empowering when it came to, you know, so what she So you knew about wanted. the gun in her purse and the air mask <laughs> right. bag. Right, because she was just like, she was just on it. So what was your, your, your when, you was, when you was thinking about making that film, what was your, like, your outlook of saying, you know, this is what I want you to do, Taraji? Like, I want you to... Well, I, okay, when I read the script, I thought it was really, really, uh, I, I thought it was very funny. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a lot of opportunity to say... Um, some smart things in a way that w was like that was like that was the aftertaste of it. I mm -hmm. wanted it to be just a lot of fun and right. people to laugh. I wanted pure entertainment. Right now, I feel like in the world, what I need to do is laugh more. Yes. Right. Yes. There's too much uh, negative chatter yes. around. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of negative chatter in my head. Mm -hmm. So I wanna I wanted to go to a place where I was just laughing. Change that stasis. And a happy place. Uh, yeah, <laughs> change that stasis. Mm -hmm. Taraji's character to me in the way that it was written in this script mm -hmm. reminded me of a lot of kind of the great 1930s, 40s, 50s yes. um, um, sort of female screwball comedy right. legends, the, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the Catherine Hepburns, the, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the Barbara Stanwyck's. I mean, these are names nobody thinks about anymore, right. but, the, but these are the people that I, of course, think about, the Rosalind Russells. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, and then, and in a more, you know, and because I wanted to do the movie so much because of Taraji, mm -hmm. and I suspected that she was going to be great at doing this just because, again, the depth of her characters right. that, that she takes on 
there's so much more going on than is ever written on the page. Right. When I hear words come out of your characters' mouths, there's so much more behind right. all of it. So I was like, <laughs> I think this is going to be fun. So I said, I'm going to strap you up in a pencil skirt. Yes. Put you I in four-inch heels. <laughs> make you run your ass. Oh, she was screaming about those shoes every day. But uh, and, and it was uncomfortable to be Ali. It was. A lot of the time, it was very physically right. uncomfortable to be her, mm -hmm. um, and so and I wanted it to mm. be that right. because I wanted her to feel trapped in the culture that right. she had chosen to be in. She chose those clothes. She chose that <laughs> job. Mm -hmm. She chose that all that kind of stuff. So she created trapped this. Herself. She trapped herself right. in this thing, and she was that she was trying to beat right. As yeah. opposed to get that. So I really modeled that character off of some of the great kind of screwball comedy heroines. Now, you know. for you, from 20 years ago when you picked up your $700 and your kid and you came <laughs> to L.A. and you said you wanted to do comedy, mm -hmm. but you got caught in so many serious roles, mm -hmm. how did it feel to just open up and unleash that, that comedic side in you oh. in this picture? <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally. Oh, God. <laughs> And I hope I get more. And of course, the very next thing I'm doing is very serious. But oh. <laughs> just, geez. but okay. I think it's okay. I feel like they're coming, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's literally what I started doing. I was special guest starring on, you know, Sister, Sister, Smart Guy, Parenthood, Saved mm -hmm. by the Bell, you know, a lot of comedies. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's what I was going to do until Baby Boy. There it is. And that really kind of set it off right there. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, Yvette. Yes, Yvette. <laughs> uh, so it's like when you think about these these characters and you put this movie together. Like I was laughing the entire time mm -hmm. because it just made it. It's like she was beating up on the men, but she wasn't really beating up on the men. It's like you are in our heads, and like we do think like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. So how did it how did it feel to say, you know what? I know what you're thinking. Did they give you a lot of leeway to kind of? Oh yeah, we all talked about how we wanted to approach this film, mm -hmm. um, given the climate. Right. You mm -hmm. know, we had to be very careful. And my thing is, I'm never out to bash any other human. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was interested in taking care of men in this film. Right. I love my son. I love the men in my life. Um, and I felt like what a great opportunity to have them both come at the table and have a meeting of the minds. It was a great way for us both to understand each other. It's not a movie just about men trying to understand women. Right. You find men in here trying to understand women through Ali. Right. And and I want to and I piggybacks on another question I wanted to ask you by you being an advocate of mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. Like, how does that that make you feel that you say, okay, well, now I'm able to play a role where I can kind of see what men really think when mm -hmm. it comes into mm -hmm. mental health and things of that nature? Well, I think we all need to take care of our mental. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> because we do, because you see, you know, um, anxiety through a lot of these men that mine she's reading, um, and 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 them trying being afraid to be vulnerable. Right. You know, so um, absolutely. It makes you look weak. Like, you know, as a man, it makes you, oh, he's crying. Oh, he's emotional. Oh, Well, that's you know. what men have been told. Right. Um, and so you have this certain standard to live up to, and that's the stigma around, mm -hmm. you know, mental health. And that's the thing we need to break through. It's it's, it's not a bad thing. You know yeah. the thing about uh, if, uh, mental health? Because I don't even know. You know my mom's a therapist. Really? Yeah, or was a therapist, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and... I grew up in, where therapy was heavily valued right. mm -hmm. in, in the world that I grew up in. And um, <laughs> because I went into therapy <laughs> first when I was three years old, so I have things to say. Um, but, but the reality is He's very serious. What, we're, what we're trying to, what's really important is reaching out and human contact, and, and you can't handle everything yourself. Right. And, the pro, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I have noticed is the biggest challenge in the mental health community, besides medical issues, right. is people who have tried to control Everything. their stress and their anxiety and how, how they, their coping mechanisms so with the world, they snap. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we're not designed to do that. We have each other so that we can use each mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. in that way for support. Mm -hmm. right. not, it's not about you know tearing each other down all the time, which is unfortunately so much of the noise that we have mm -hmm. around us. Right. Now and and also, I can see why Ali felt like you know there was people trying to tear her down. She mm -hmm. felt that there were people trying to tear right. her down. But what is odd is that they were the men are all trying to tear each other down too. Right. It's yeah. like sort everybody's of trying instinct, to get to the top. Everybody, you know what you know. I mean? It's yeah. that that is. I don't. How do women? Oh, I guess women do this a lot too. 
we hear a lot about how women compare each other to each mm. other a lot. You can be very catty. But and very men catty. do the same, same thing. freaking thing. But y'all right. can put y'all's differences aside, work together, and get that money. Not really. Huh? <laughs> Drake and me, a okay. week, the list goes okay. on and on. Okay. But men in the music industry and producers I so know true. that hate each other can still get together and make that money. Women, yeah. not so much. So. Now, my last question is: like They're telling me to wrap it up. There, there, there it is. I'm curious. They're about telling this stuff. me. Are you sure you? But you okay. feel me, right? I, Where do you see women really collaborating? I mean, it's coming together it's now. It's coming together now, now a lot. Right? Now, yeah, but, but back been, then, mm -hmm. even yeah. even in the rap world, women can't come to and couldn't you, you and still can't today. Which is Dana was good. Latifa was good at that. She yeah, always she always did. She always yeah. brought other women. Up. Well, that was a different era too. Yeah. So, one more question because they tell me to wrap it up. How much does Ali? favor to Raji in the real world. Oh, oh. I think um, her get up and fight. Like, I, I know how to fight for whatever. <laughs> I'm from Southeast DC, you better get mm -hmm, That part. <laughs> <father. Hey. laughs> Southside. Yes. <laughs> so I just did get up and fight. And I was just saying, because, you know, like, I know in, your, in the real world you are, you know, a powerful woman. Mm -hmm. and so a lot of men can be intimidated about you because of what but you do. But the difference that that's where she and I are very different. I'm <laughs> tapped into my nurturing side. Okay. You know, I'm a mother. You know, so I, I'm raising a son, so I have to, you know, be show him a softer side, so he know which woman, which kind of woman to pick. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> so does he bring home? No some, control issues. We're trying to get him to get her to pick him because they don't choose y'all. You don't want him nothing. to. You want him to make good choices. Y'all don't choose. We choose y'all. Yeah. Bring you somebody want home to make like mom. Yeah. So thank you for your time. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, thank you. I, the movie is great, and thank you. I had a ball, and I'm going to see it again today. So yes. oh, yeah, I'll thank see you on the record. So thank you so much. DMV's number one outlet to the streets, BU DVD magazine. Be you, all you gotta do is be you. Be you, all you gotta do is be you. Be you, all you gotta do is be you. Be you, all you gotta do is be you. Be you. WPGC 95.5, DMV Fix Your Face, Cut Your Radios Up. It's your man Tony Reyes, a.k.a. Mr. 24-7. I got a legend in the building. Her name is Remy Ma. Okay, a legend. That's what's up. I like this talk. I yeah, like that, that. That's the type of cloth talk that I like to hear this though. Because you legendary. So I'm Thank just going to jump straight to the game. So okay. Now that, I mean, last time I seen you was at the BT Awards. So, yes. you know, I done burned your ear up then. <laughs> so now... You know, what I didn't, didn't get to ask you is... What? You was a prodigy to Big Pun. Yes. And Little Kim was a prodigy to Biggie. Yes. How did that make you feel to, to be under, like, a legend like Pun? Like, Pun was a oh, pun monster. Oh, amazing. Like, I tell people that all the time. Like, you know, I don't, I, I don't feel like a lot of times he gets his, his just due. Like, is not too many rappers that I think could stand next to him. And, and still shine in, in, in his presence, like, as as whack as prom. But, um, you know, to be able to do a project with, it was so weird that, that you say it like that, because we didn't even realize it until we started shooting a video. And, like, you know, I was doing my thing, and, and Kim was doing her thing, and we had pause in between um, scenes. And this guy, he was like, yo, I just got chills on my arms. He's like, yo, it was just like watching Big and Pun over there. I was like, whoa, like that, right. that's deep. Right. Like I didn't even look at it on that level. But um, it's it's a it's a wonderful thing when you have somebody that that you look up to and that you think is great and that other people consider great and iconic and legendary, and they co-sign you. Like Pun is the reason I'm able to sit here and talk to you. Right. Like and. I, can't nobody ever take that from him. Like, he gave me my shot. He believed in me. Okay, now, a lot of local artists mm -hmm. in the city, yes. they come to me and they, they, they throw in their CDs, they send me their music. Remy, can I tell you that it's not coded? Can I tell you that it's not copywritten? 
can I tell you that you know they don't, some of them don't even own their own names? Can you tell? Can you please tell the youth of the district of Merlin of VA how important it is to handle your business before you handle your music? Um, well, it de well it depends. It depends because some people they just do music because they love music. They just do it because you know this is something that's in their heart and they feel it and. They just love doing music. If that's what you're doing for, because you just want people to hear your music mm -hmm. and you don't really care about anything else, cool. Just keep passion out your music, uncoded, uncopyrighted, and, and all of that. Well, other somebody stuff. come along, snatch it, oh, put it up, and but, make but if, tons of money. Okay, but if it's if you're not doing it for the money, then that's not gonna bother you. You don't care. That's not. This is not for your livelihood. This is just something you gotta do. If you're in this because you eventually want to make money one day, you want to be able to take care of your family, you want to be able to, you know possibly even be wealthy absolutely no that is not just not those are the those are the basics the getting your name um you know um registered and owning the trademark and getting your copyrights to all your music and just whatever all of that stuff that's the basics that you just need period for yourself but i mean really learning the business like where's the money come from what does the money go to? Where can you get money? Like, you want to know how to make money without using your money. Yeah, a lot yes. of people, you know, I see like, yo, I'm trying to get this money together because I want to do this. Like, that's that's not what people do. People get other people money. You get other people to invest in you or you get loans or you get whatever you need to in order to, you don't use your own money. I mean, it's, it's cool if you if you up like that and you're great. I don't want, I don't want like <laughs> use my own money. When I was independent, it was it was so cool because I spent a lot of the time that I was away learning the business. But it took me years to know like, okay, this is not just about being the best rapper and having people say I'm dumb nice and she could rap and her song was dope. Like, nah, this is really a business and I myself, I am a brand. I am the walking brand. And I started I, I was making eleven cents an hour and I was getting the Billboard Billboard magazine, which is like do you know that magazine is like three hundred dollars a year for a subscription? Whoa. It's ridiculous. People don't even read magazines like that. I don't even understand it. But it, I was learning who was making money on on their tours, who was the top selling tours, who was um what songs was moving in what um regions, just all different types of things that you that I just didn't care about, and the average artist just doesn't look into what labels is doing what, who's the execs, who's in this position, what does this position do? All of that stuff, it, it matters. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go and say, "Hey, I'm gonna be. I want to be the owner, or, or you know, the person that's um, running a McDonald's." And you don't know, you don't know what they sell. You don't know nothing about a Big Mac. You don't know nothing about no fries. You don't know nothing about a fryer. Like these are the things you you have to know. If you wanted to open a store, you want to open anything, a liquor store. You got to know what brands is there. How do you get your um. The, the vendors, how do you get the price? And like people get into this business, they just, they, I'm just gonna rap and I'm gonna put music out. Nah, it's steps that you have to take. Even like, that's what anything that you wanna do. Find out what you really getting into. You might, I know people who go to school for years, four years, six years, get degrees in something that they don't even care about. Or in a, in a job that's not even gonna make them any money. They, they owe more money in loans and student loans than they'll ever make in a profession that they trying to be in. So, you know, you got to really do your research on in anything, not just music. Bad, bad. Now, you got the song out, Wake Up, Wake with another up. legend. Yes. How did that come about? Well. Where can <laughs> be? Well, that, that, was, it was, that was easy, man. I can tell you that one easy. Um, I, I got the, the beat from uh, Cool and Dre and Smitty Beats in Miami. And I was right into it. And I just kept hearing a little Kim on it. Like this, it's a sample from Mary J. Blige's "I Could Love You," mm -hmm. who's a where you know Mary is an icon. Mary is Mary, and um, Kim was on that record. So I'm like, all right, maybe that's why I'm hearing on this. And then I'm like, no, because the sample was also used on Little Kim's hardcore album, also right. on Queen Bee. I'm like, you know what? I just I need Kim on this record. Like that's it. Like I I, I hear it in my head. I hear her on my ad libs. I hear everything how I want her cadence to be like I need to I need to get on track and I called her and I told her and she was like of course I got you there's nothing come through she was in the studio we linked up and we made it happen called her a week later like hey you want to shoot the video she's like yeah I right, let me know what you need hair makeup you know just whatever and I and I got you and we and we did it
But see that, like when you say stuff like that, when right. I when I hear you say when I hear you say you just called her and she was with it, yeah. this is what I try to get the rappers in my city to do. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if they work together. Oh, it's, it's how just amazing when you work how together. how big the movement could be. But they too busy beefing with each other. And, 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 and starting problems with each other See, before the they even make some money. People don't understand is that there's no money in beef. When when you beefing with somebody, you can't make no money. You you worried about what's your next move? What what they what they gonna say? How you gonna counter? How you gonna? You can't even focus. It's it's the same thing. When countries are at war, there's no jobs. It's no nothing. All the money is going towards making. Um, weapons and sending out troops and taking it like there's no job everything is messed up so when you at war you you beefing and you going back and forth you you taking all your energy that could be going into your music and into being prosperous and putting it into something negative so i'm never gonna co-sign that like that's why i'm in and out all right this is what we gonna do all right this is it and i'm out of here we're not gonna drag this on this is what we're not gonna keep doing right because you just not, you slap nikki and when she was on to the next yeah, much. <laughs> I think a lot of times people take everything. People are real sensitive. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't really know how to. Um, it's just business. I don't know how to filter myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I I feel like filters are things for things like fish tanks and cigarettes and <laughs> air conditioners. And I don't I don't have a filter, so I I feel like if I'm talking to somebody that's adult, I can, I can pretty much tell you exactly how I feel. I don't shouldn't have, shouldn't have to sugarcoat it or, or go around it. A lot of times people be in their feelings. You say something, oh, she said this and this. I'm like, I said what I said. What? No problem, man. <laughs> Relax. Calm down. So like, when is this know. album set to drop? Um, The album is next year, 2018. I don't have an exact date yet. But um, I do have all my singles lined up. I'm shooting videos literally like every week, every two weeks. Because... I don't really know the order that I want them to go in. It, I, I'd go as as I think about like the Kim record, Wake Me Up record wasn't supposed to be like the first record that you guys heard. Right. There's another record that was supposed to be first, but the, the climate of music changes. So I was like, all right, we'll, we'll, the way I'm feeling right now, the way the atmosphere right now, this seems like the record that I should go with. So I know what record that I'm, in my mind is gonna be the next record. Shot the video for it. The song is clear, it's ready to go. But is that necessary? That could it change tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to have everything ready in case I change my mind. Like, all right, change my mind. I want to go with this one. And the video's already done here. Let's go. I don't have to chase nobody down. I don't have to find nobody on tour. I don't want to have to come up on my own tour. I want everything. Why? So it's still moving. It's moving. This is moving fast, and I'm running around every day. But while I have a little bit of time here and there, I'm I'm trying to get everything done ahead of time. There it is, DMV Remy Ma in the building. I'm about to get her to spit some bars, man. So y'all better fix your face and stay tuned right here on WPGC 95.5. Remy, yes. thank you. Love. Hey, love. Love. Don Gotti did love, that. Love, did love, that. Love, love, love. I'm Northeast, baby. Built to swim too cold. I got three different numbers like an early code. I was shocked with these niggas cause they selling they sold. They say he ain't gon' switch up, but I swear he gon' fold. I'm a Northeast, baby. Built to swim too cold. I got three different numbers like an early code. I was shocked. Baby
bitch, I come from the islands. Bitch, I'm paradise stunting, and my youngest be wildin'. I got CJ in the cut, and there's Nico behind him. He can perp out if he want, bitch. If he wrong, we gon' find him. We was chopping out them freeways, we was right on them benches. Sweetin' like we on the freeway, we was right in them trenches. One way in and one way out, I know you heard about the circle. He running at the mouth, my Northeast is they a murder? I'm a Northeast baby, bitch, I swam too cold. I got three different numbers, like a array code. I'm a shop with these niggas, cause they selling they sold. He say he ain't gon' switch up, but I swear he gon' fold. I'm a Northeast baby, bitch, I swam too cold. I got three different numbers, like a array code. I'm a shop with these niggas, cause they selling they sold. He say he ain't gon' switch up, but I swear he gon' fold. I'm a Number one outlet to the streets. BU DVD magazine. Be you. All you gotta do is be you. Be you. All you gotta do is be you. Be you. All you gotta do is be you. Be you. All you gotta do is be you. Be you. In the club or getting footage on a yacht. Yeah. Athletes, entertainers, the hustle don't stop. Nah. You can tune in from home, home. and still party with me. Yeah. Cause A and B love got access to the city. Right. Boston like them. Oh. We all gon' get it in, lock it in at 1 a.m. Because it's coming on again. Yeah. Exclusive access. Interviews, videos, I can the other month. We nothing like them other shows from the purr to a beat. A beezer to the love. Yeah. My man Big A keep it popping in the club. BU, DVD magazine is a beast. 